All right, guys. So welcome back to the Raised Hunting Podcast. I'm joined today by my two kids, Warren and Easton. That's us. And so Easton is looking through to see who we're going to highlight today on our board of Hall of Fame there. And uh, Warren is looking through for a wacky fact, I imagine. No, people shout out. Oh, and so we need to check on some shout outs. But it is turkey season, and we're going to be talking a little bit about turkeys. We'll introduce the topic here in just a minute, but you want to, you got a couple people you need to shout out to? Uh, yes, on our YouTube, folks, the Masonry Kid. Shout out to you. The Usuals, David Harrison, Jeremy Rupsick, Bam Bam 2533, uh, and I think, was it Bam Bam? Oh, yeah, yeah. He has a good podcast topic for us to cover. We're not going to do it right today, but um, we will do it. It's asking about basically organizing elk hunts and how to how do you start. So I think that, that we'd actually kind of t- touched on that and talked about doing that. So that's a um, that'll be a good one to cover. And then Spotify people have been rolling. Can't shout you out because it doesn't show us who you were. And then YouTube people or not YouTube. Apple Podcast people have been lazy. Uh oh. Yeah, they've been being Shaming lazy. Them. They haven't been writing very so, many pot or reviews lately. Yeah, lazy. Uh Jake DeLee. DeLee. Which is up there on the left. Deer laying on the tailgate. Correct. With the beard. Red. red very nice beard. beard at that. Yeah. Covered <laughs> in camo. <laughs> That's a wonderful comment. No, nothing about your deer, Jake, but you got a good beard. Yeah, it's nice. Beard. <laughs> That's a worn out. Very nice say. beard. Blends in with All right. face paint. We're do, I'm doing a sh- uh, short one today because we're on a tight schedule. So Jake Dooley sent in his, oh, I guess for anybody that doesn't know, we're doing, we had everybody send in stories for us uh, that related to the podcast, didn't relate to the podcast, but mainly podcast listeners success hunting stories and we got their photos on the wall and we're going to keep adding to it so today's lucky winner is like i said jake delee after listening to you guys speak about patterning deer i figured i should share my experience also what happens when you overthink november 7th i had this deer come down the exact same trail three days in a row the fourth day was his final as he came in five minutes before the end of shooting light to 30 yards and i center punched him on the three previous days, I had been out hunting but chose not to sit this piece of land thinking there's no way he goes by again down the same trail in early November. For some reason he did, making the same path to the same small patch of standing corn. Long story short, I should or I could have ended my hunt on the 5th or 6th had I just gone and sat and not thought so hard about it. Uh, I think we all become guilty of that. Yep, yep that is uh, good luck. I think you you're probably going to uh, always overthink. I'm the I best at it. What you and not overthink? You, you just are send both, it. Um, debatably, equivalently as bad. I don't. Oh yeah, I, I overthink I, when it comes to white tail deer. 100%. Oh, I know. I start overthinking when I'm about 30 days in, <laughs> and nothing works anyways. So I just start thinking. You start overthinking so far ahead of time that you're overthinking. You don't even realize you've overthought it. Yeah, you're probably overthinking right now. <clears throat> For next season. Which is shocking because it no, doesn't I'm seem like you have an where, overthinking problem. Where I'm going to turkey else. hunt. That's what I'm thinking about. Don't overthink it. Oh, thanks. Because I said I was going where I was going. And you said, oh, I don't know if I'd go there. Appreciate that. Okay. I'm, I'm not an overthinker. I said, Dad texted me, did you go and, uh, go to Roost Birds? And I was like, yeah. I tried. I gave it like five minutes. I told Nick. I was like, yeah, we're just setting up. Went and set up the blind. He's like, so did you find them? He's like, no, I'm sure they're there. <laughs> Went back yesterday morning. There were some there. Got lucky. Mm-hmm. You could have made it a lot easier on yourself, but. It was pretty easy. All right, go on, boys. All right, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to recap the first day and a half here of turkey season because it's fully underway. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've had some pretty good success already. So Warren just kind of let the cat out of the bag on his, but, um, Easton and I sat together. So we have a little bit to share there. Is there anything particular that we want to, in any particular order that we want to go about discussing this or in you do del- Warren's cause it's simpler. Cause I'm a sniper. Well, yours comes. Hold from- on. Pause. 
pause. Okay, we are supportive of you and a lot of the things you do. The I reason no, taken stop, enough stop, stop. On this, that this, I can, and we've I can, also said good I can freaking talk job some, a little bit. You're not talking crap. You're yeah. being cocky when you have no room to be cocky. You're awful no, at hunting oh, I'm turkeys. I'm going to be as cocky as I can on this one because I never hit them good. So the one time I do, I'm going to live it up. What okay. side of the family did he get it from? Because it is the, his worst trait. I would say that's his mom's side. Oh, boy. Yeah, it definitely is, I think. Good thing she's not on this episode. Yep. I think well, she'll I admit it. She says she's not good at winning or losing. <laughs> right. But but you got you you need to pay some tribute to how you've figured out where to set the blind. You're saying you went up there the day before, you didn't wait to listen for turkeys, you just knew what this is where you want to go. Yeah. So how did you know all that? <laughs> because those turkeys never leave. Because so, you've haunted them for five years. No. On so you are would you set him straight? I had never hunted Stuart until uh, last year. Last year was the first time I'd ever hunted it. And then that's because the year before, you and Marty shot at the, half the flock. Remember? I, don't, <laughs> I think that was more than three years ago. No. But okay. It was, how many birds did you guys shoot at? He shot three different times. Okay. <laughs> and then <laughs> Mom, never, <laughs> never touched the turkey. <laughs> Sounds like the Cooney shot, too. And then, I, and then I found his quiver a month later, laying it with all his broken arrows laying down in the ditch. And I could take you to it. Lost, I could take you to one of his arrows right now. It's right. still in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> so I had never gotten hunted until last year. Last year was the first time that I'd hunted there. But at the same time, from just deer hunting it, it's one of those places where they, they are always there in the same spot that there will always be be at least some turkeys there so it's pretty reliable i mean you don't really have to um scout it because it, we have a couple others not a not a bunch but i can think of like one kind of where i shot my turkey last year mm -hmm. that that is a place where there will always be the turkeys there will always be some there i think is what it is is it's a smaller version of when we used to hunt out west where they their winter flocks are there and then they start to bust out of those and, and expand from there, but some of them always stay there. I don't think the ones you were hunting yesterday morning, they I don't ever see them in bigger groups than that. They, they're all there all the time. I mean, there's a lot of them there, but they're always there. Well, I heard I'm them all that, freaking... On the rest of the farm, yeah, they're always there, but I'm sh there's got to like, be turkeys out throughout the rest of that farm somewhere, I would yeah. imagine. There, that can't be the only place that those that there's turkeys, I don't think. Well, that's where we've but, killed them all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Within a, I'd say within a 150 yard circle. Well, I know too where Nick and I hunted last year. We hunted um, up on top in that alfalfa field, and we could hear birds that were other directions. Right. There was definitely some back there still, but um, but yeah, ours was pretty pretty straightforward. It was good for us. So Nick and I had three toms come out in the road, and uh, had all the hens come to us. And the tom still didn't come, which I was like, how is that even possible? There was one hen left that the one tom was breeding, and so the other two were freaking out. And then finally they he quit breeding her, and she sprinted towards us, cuts in the timber at like 40, and uh, and then they start coming down the road. I'm like, perfect. They're going to get to like 50, 60 yards and see the decoy. I, I, I don't know if they could see it before. I feel like they could have, but I don't think they cared because they were 120 yards away. Um, and then – Anyways, though, they they cut into the timber at, like, 80. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. But they didn't go anywhere. I went into the timber. Could hear them gobbling over there. And the, a coyote or a bobcat or something, I'm guessing, spooked them because all the hens flew up in the trees. Why the toms didn't, I don't know. Well, you're sitting right next know. to a coyote den right there, too. That whole place is a coyote den. Well, there's there, actually a coyote den there, right there, the within, guy like, that, 100 yards. Yeah. The guy that coyote hunts it doesn't do a very good job. But... Mm -hmm. uh. Anyways, <laughs> kind of like you with turkey hunting. <laughs> Not this year. And so anyways, all the, the the hens flew up and there was still turkeys gobbling and so finally they they did come over to us and and three toms came in and I shot the one at like I don't know, 13 yards something like that. Right. And I had to shoot him one more time for good measure. Well, I shot him two more times for good measure, but I've learned with these things if they are if they're blinking, fling. Yep. Just keep shooting. <laughs> Yep. Well, that, but that was it's true. They don't freaking die. And so, did you guys? Was there other birds that didn't come in? Yeah, or was that was the only ones couple, you guys heard? No, there was a couple. There's goblin. Um, what decoys like should, did you have set up? Uh, we'd use the strutter, mm -hmm. and then a lay down hen and the feeding hen. 
I don't think the lay down hand does anything. You're I 100% just, wrong. Yeah, I think it does. That is the – if I had to get rid of all the decoys, except – like if I could keep a male, do one male and one female, it's a breeding hen every time. Well, I'm going to separate that next time, and I won't use it, and we'll see. Because I think part of the time they can't even see it most of the time. No, but when I think it's what keeps them – you you can force a shot between the two because they get between it. You know, try to cut them off. Yeah, I don't – Cut I, the tom off. The thing that was really interesting is of the two toms that came in, there was three toms that came in, but of the two, two of them were 20 yards beside us the whole time and coming in, and one was skirting us kind of, right? He was staying at like 35 in the timber, and then I moved the decoy so it rotated with the – the strut and 360 deal so it rotated to him so you could his face and like when i did that i don't know if like the other ones just got close enough or what but he just turned and on a line and came right to it and then brought the other two in because they were acting like they were going to kind of try to just go around us around it yeah which i was nervous about because i was sitting in the chair that's why we usually like to try to get down on the blind and shoot off of our knees um i think that you think that it's more comfortable for you form wise for me, it's just I can shoot further and I can move oh, yeah. quicker. Um, so I was stuck in a chair just with where they showed up as soon as they did. And uh, I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to get over far enough. And so then finally they did come over and then that one brought him. So that was the other thing Ethan and I were trying to figure out yesterday is I used the that that avian strutter. You can interchange the heads, mm-hmm. you know, and, and the one is like a lot more white and the other one's uh, the red and Red, Red, white, and blue. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I, it seems as though they, they match their color to the head of the decoy. We were looking at your guys'. Your guys' were all super white-headed when they came in. Mine were, ex- like, exactly the same as my decoy. Which was so, blue. You had the blue, the red, white, and blue head on there. Yeah. So I want to. we want to switch it and see if it. Oh, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to go try to see if I can see other birds visualize it and see if they do it because we did see we saw two strutters today that had two did one was pure white head and the other one was red they're both strutting around it'd each be other. really interesting to see if that i have theories on the anything. color but that one throws me off if they're matching it i have that kind of throws a lot of things out the window if they match the freaking <laughs> i definitely think white means mad that's what i've always like thought the birds that are more <clears throat> see i haven't been able to figure out white the red white and blue they're they're very comfortable. They're coming, typically. I feel like white's and even more like just lax, but they're gonna they have no issue screwing some stuff up. Right, red like a solid red head. He's at, he's mm-hmm. deep worried red or, or dark. Yeah, red. he's worried about something. Mm-hmm. He's he, going away. I've seen the bright red ones look good though too, where they're really really bright red, all red, and mm-hmm. they come in. You know you could yeah you know, yeah there you go. Good job. You're welcome. Well, cool. Well, congratulations on your opening day turkey. That was a good. Thank you. Yeah. Now let's get to the interesting one. <laughs> the interesting. It wasn't that inter. I mean, it was interesting, but the it, whole thing is interesting. Okay. Because first off, the fact that so Easton took dad hunting. Yes. Took him to a place that Easton did the work. Had found the birds. From what I understand, wouldn't allow you to call. Or at no, least I, tried I asked to. him he at asked one me point. Call, finally, for, about eight o'clock, he said, "Maybe you ought to hit a, your diaphragm call." <laughs> no, I did not. Why you word it like that? Well, yeah, that's I said, "Hey, my diaphragm isn't doing very well, and I don't like it. Do yours, and right. I'll use my slate still." Okay. It wasn't like, "Oh, I can't do it." Go ahead. No, Dad. I didn't say that. I wasn't saying that at all. But I didn't call until he asked me to. Until he told me I was I listening. Didn't shut up. The but. only the other thing that I didn't do is I didn't. I didn't argue when he told me he was leaving a decoy behind the blind, and I should have. Did, we'll get to And that. when I told him to get in the blind because he wouldn't stop questioning everything we were doing. Did you tell him what you said about the decoy behind the blind? I told every uh, we. I told him right away. Okay. I didn't know if he admitted it or not. That was my thing. That it, See, that's the <clears> difference <throat> between me and you. I'm good at admitting when I do things wrong, and I learn things. I, I told him right or something wrong. But I'll just also... I also take credit. Oh, dude, you're on crack. I absolutely <laughs> will say any time that I screw nobody stuff can up. see the face that Easton is making right now when you're listening to a podcast because he's aghast. Which that is, was a screw up, and that was simply hurrying. That was my. I don't know why. Normally, when I hurry, I just say screw things and set them down. Or right. 
during but the way. So, but so to back up, so we got there yesterday morning. Easton had already taken a blind to the this spot, or not all the way to the spot, but partially in there. And then we were packing a, a strutting decoy, um, a feeding hen, or a stand, an upright hen, and a feeding hen. And and then the lay down hen, and so we had the strutting tom, we had the feeding hen, and the lay down hen all set together out in front of us. That was our core where we're going to shoot spot. Well, then he had an upright hen that was left over. I wasn't so, planning on. I wasn't even planning on using it. That's why I don't know why. I just so anyhow, he set it about I don't know eight seven eight yards behind the blind, off to our right a little bit. Upright, like head up. Yeah, head up. Okay, because I hate that one sometimes. I always hate that one. But, Sometimes um, it freaking works well. But it started, I mean, the morning started awesome. I mean, we the only, we were set up on a hill, and the the blind that we are using, you can't get the window down as far as you can on some of the other ones. And so I was a little concerned about the shot because I knew it was up higher and trying to shoot downhill, you know. So I had to get on my knees and raise up as high as I could because the chair wasn't going to be high enough. And uh, But anyhow, I mean, it started off, really. We got in there and didn't bust anything. We heard a hen. It was the wind. You guys were in the timber, so you probably didn't have as much wind as we did. It was calm for us. See, we had quite a bit of wind, and the wind was blowing, and it was rattling on our blind. It was making a noise, so that was annoying. I was trying to figure out how to solve that. But at the same time, we had, what, I don't know, eight or ten toms or eight or ten turkeys that we could hear throughout not necessarily like we were hunting but there was a group right in front of us but there's probably another or there's at least two or three other groups that were around yeah way far away yeah. you know and so anyhow but then finally he hit a few calls and they started to answer you could tell they were answering him and then we just started watching and then we were facing the timber and they were actually in the timber i expected possibly they pitched down in the timber they pitched down in the timber i was thinking we would see him possibly pitch down out into the field we were set up in or to our left, yeah. and we didn't all sudden, you know, and then they started gobbling, and as they were gobbling, I just happened to be looking through my binoculars, looking down in the timber, and I'm like, oh, I see a tom, I mean, and, and then another one, and then another one, and so here comes three strutters, and they come right up to the edge where they got a couple hens with them. We thought, all right, here we go. The hen, the one hen wanted to come. She, mm -hmm. she came out in the field and farted around for a little bit, but they would not leave the timber. And then they also kept running back into the timber. Right. And so later on, what ended up happening, there was another Tom that showed up. And those three ran in to run him off. And when they went back in the timber, we lost them for a little bit. And then we kept calling, and then the hens started coming out again. And this time, four Toms are coming, but the one is not with them. He's definitely being kept at a distance. So he's the first one that comes out in the field following this hen. And he starts coming the other, well, he, now he's like in a sandwich because we got our Tom sitting there and three Toms are behind him. But I knew he wasn't going to come right to us because he didn't want anything to do with those other three Toms. So he kind of skirted to our right and he stayed over. Well, then the closer they got to us, the more aggravated the three Toms got and the more chicken this first one was. And so he went right by us at like 30 yards and walked beside us. Well, where does he go? Well, he right came back yeah. to it. Yeah, he came he, back. He first, went, first he they chased like him. 40 yards yeah. out there, and I thought he was just going to leave. And yeah, of course, first, he did The one leave. that got chased, though. Yeah, the one that got chased chased by us, complete, like Easton said. He actually, first of all, went like 40 yards behind us. And then one of the other three broke off and really wanted to make sure he was leaving. And so he came up beside us and followed him. <laughs> the other two just kept strutting right there in front of us. And they're probably 40 yards, something like that. But then I heard, it, I started looking back there, and one of those toms swung around. Because now the hens have kind of made their way. They're probably within 20 yards of us. They and ended up getting pretty close. They finally got, they finally committed, and the hens eventually got to within eight, seven, eight yards of the decoys. But when they did, that stupid tom went straight to that single hen by herself over here. And so he's strutting all around the hen that is not set up. Yep. or supposedly not set up. And so I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And so then the other Tom went over there to run him off. So two of them are back there. They're, so we got two Toms at eight yards, and we can't do anything about it. Well, one, he bred the one for and like it, 10 Yeah, and then too. so the one of the other two actually jumped up on a hen and bred the hen 
And so then eventually, as he got done, that's the only thing that now they had kind of come back over all together and they got around him while he was breeding that hen and he finished. And one of those toms got up off and decided, okay, we better go take care of this other tom, meaning our tom. And he came walking over. And so East and I both had our bows and I was to shoot if they're on the right. He's to shoot if they're on the left. All this was happening on the right. So it was to my side. Mm-hmm. And so here he comes and I'm finally checking with Eli. I'm like, you good? And he's like, yeah. And I come to full draw before he cleared the window. Well, then I'm really worried about hitting the bottom of the blind. And so I'm at Easton's telling me even before he knew I was worried. He saw me, I guess, because he's like, you're good. You're good. But it looks so close to me. And I, I kept it asking. It was like two or three inches, but it was, you were plenty clear. Well, and then they didn't come in like a just calm, and they were moving around trying to figure out whether they want to beat up this guy or that guy or whatever. Long story short, I missed. The first one was pretty calm. The first one was somewhat They weren't calm. hanging out, though. The whole situation yeah, I mean, was that he was he ga- he came in, and was that was the calmest he got for like five seconds, and the rest was... The whole Moving time, around you the couldn't tell time. if he was going to come or he's going to leave. It, you, so right. you couldn't time anything. Yeah. But for whatever reason, I just whiffed it. I mean, I did not hit the shiny. I was aiming at the shiny spot, and I shot to the right of it and went through just the some feathers in the back part of I mean, I didn't touch anything. Well, yeah, because he walked out there walked and Walked out there and started <laughs> strutting again. Did you but, shoot your bow? Not yet. No? No. But I shot it the night before, and it was absolutely fine, especially left and right. And it was calm? No, it was kind of windy. It's been windy every day, so. Maybe you were right, and it's just the wind, what was direction was the no, wind? No, there's no way it I could have been. It was blowing the correct way to blow the arrow that much, but that would be really impressive. Well, you're only pulling what now? 60 pounds. <laughs> you're still at 60? Yeah. It was blowing okay. left to right, though, and you hit how, right. Yeah, and how much wind are we talking? Because the last few days have been pretty windy. Yeah, it was windy only, as crap. I couldn't turn the decoy. Yeah, but we're only talking about seven or eight yards, though, too. Yeah, seventy miles or seven or eight yards in a thirty mile an hour crosswind. I don't know. I'm not blaming it on the wind. I think I just whiffed it. Well, it's not the wind yesterday. Is what I'm telling you. Because if your left was right was on the day you were shooting when it was windy, right? You were probably shooting at what twenty? Yeah. And you 30. were dead on left and right. And thirty and forty. So you were probably way right. I don't think so. Was it was the wind out of the west? Were you shooting at your house? That was blowing right in my face. Okay. Well, that throws that, that out. <laughs> Right. So I don't I'm not blaming it on the wind. I think I just whiffed it. That's all there was to it. I mean he was moving around and I was trying to watch everything and I don't think I got completely settled and I shot and I had a feeling I did not hit him good. But I'm telling he didn't go anywhere, so I'm telling Easton, shoot him, shoot him. And so Easton comes a full draw, he's trying to shoot, but then they stay to the right. Oh, I was at full draw on the one you had already shot? Yeah. See I didn't know that. I was only watching you. Oh no. Trying to watch your arrows. And I thought he ran off. No, that was the same one. Oh, wow. So I'm reaching for another arrow because I can see they're going to get to the right, and then another one comes in. And so I knock another arrow, and then he lets down because he's like, I can't get a shot at him. And the one that I would that came in this time now is turning and is walking straight away. And I was like, well, shoot, he's only like 20 yards, and I think he was like 24, 25 when I actually shot. Um, and I hit a little bit right. I mean, I know that's why you guys are probably thinking I'm shooting right, but I think, again, it was just hurrying and everything was going on. But I hit him right in the drumstick, and then it went through his left, his right drumstick and into his body cavity and stuck in there, and he f- did a couple of the flips, and we knew he was hurt pretty yeah, bad. That yeah. one was not – I mean, he he was – He wasn't going He had anywhere. taken a pounding. Right. So we – but anyhow, I mean, so then we just – let the other ones work their way off. And that was, I wanted to make sure I'm always doubting when they get out of sight and I can't see, Mm -hmm. but the other three Toms came out of the ditch with all the hens and we're missing a Tom. So I was like, okay, good deal. We got a dead Turkey over there in that ditch. Yeah. That is one thing I, um, Nick and I looked at yesterday that to keep in mind when you want, you want to grab the, uh, anatomy diagram real quick. Yeah. This, that wing, butt. I don't know that this is 100% accurate because it's this one right up here where their wing, yep. you know, that the wing butt. That thing is unbelievably thick, hard. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I shot that bird yesterday when he was laying on the ground at like six yards, uh, just trying to get another arrow in him. And I'm pulling 70 pounds, 28 and a half inch draw length. 
and then now it was the rear opening expandables, but still. Front deploying. We yeah. learned this. Well, anyways, <laughs> I hit him right there in that, so it all busted his wing up and everything, and then, and he, like, just dumped, and I was like, okay, he's finally completely finished, you know, and, uh, well, anyways, he wasn't completely finished, but then I was showing Nick, I was like, dude, I don't, I don't know that this, I don't think that arrow actually entered his body cavity, body cavity which after further analysis it did but only an inch like literally an inch is all so it hit that wing butt went through that and only went in an inch so my point is is if that had been the first arrow you, you're not killing that turkey right or if you are it's going to be like from infection and who knows when there's no way you're going to find him so just keep that in mind that 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 wing butt is really really freaking tough for sure I think that's a good point to bring up. So, but anyhow, so we got over there. My bird was alive. Same thing. We tried to put another arrow in him, and then finally Easton decided we're not going to shoot at this turkey anymore. We're just going to tackle him. <laughs> so there's quite the footage of him <laughs> dive bombing this turkey <laughs> in a ditch and rolled him around and pulled all of his tail feathers out. Not so. intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> but So he had, when he was all dead, said and done, he had five tail feathers left, none of which are in the middle. All it's dead a, and done. He's yeah. on, on the edges of, of everything. But I, I just, I mean, I think it just speaks volumes, though, to the uh, decoy setup that we had, you know, two setups very similar in setup and that don't just throw a, de I mean, because honestly, the, re the reason I questioned what you were doing when you did that is I've done that before and it's worked. And that is put your whole decoy set up too far, like 25 oh, yards out. Oh, you turd. And then That's bring... A, I was going to say that I did learn from that, that yep. I know how to do it now. Put a single hen right where you want to shoot. Separate from them. And then your, possibly your chicken birds would come over to that. Okay. I, I tried that with... So that does work? I tried it that with Bushy Beard. That was my next goal. <laughs> and, and I got him close, but I didn't... He still wouldn't come. How close? Like 25 yards close to the decoy, which put him at like 30. And he was walking around. He was all nervous. You yeah. Know? But um, but this one, I believe, if your little group is out there and then you put that hen right in front of you, you got a really good chance. Gosh. How far did you put the decoys at? When? the Yesterday. Uh, eight, ten. seven yards, eight yards. Yeah, I'm done doing it at five, six yards. Yeah, then needs like, to be I'll put ten. Them at like 10 to 10 to 12. Six yards is too close. Yeah, it's too hard to get to full draw and everything yep. when it's that close. I'll just put them wherever the window is facing and it's far enough away. Yeah, but I think, we, I, I think I've think i learned my lesson. I agree with Warren. I'm backing up to like 8 or 10 yards. Well, I yeah. like this setup yesterday and this morning was about the same. Like that would have smoked them. Yeah, I'm going to – I'm 100% going to – I was going to try – do because I think the bird that I had this morning too – Quite possibly, if I would have done the two or three further away and the one in there, that he might have came because he didn't really want. He was all fired up, but he didn't really want to fight, and he had already ran across an entire field for another hen, a lone right. hen. Yeah, well, now I'll have more confidence in trying it. I suppose. Gotcha. <laughs> what are what's uh, what's next? Easton's got to kill a turkey because yeah, that was the cool thing. I got uh, someone ever or everyone needs to know. That's pretty pretty freaking cool when your kid is saying, hey, I wanted, I mean, because you had every right to be able to hunt first, shoot first. You found the turkeys and everything. And for him to say, hey, I want you to shoot first. I want to see if I can do this. I Not see if I can do it, but I just want to do it for you. And that I, you don't get to be in that position. There's been a lot of years where it's been, I'm putting you guys first because it was your first turkey or your first one with a bow or whatever, you know, and I wouldn't change any of that for the world. You know, so, um, but we're good about taking turns and stuff like that. So, but yesterday was very, very special. That was I agree. A, that was a cool deal. That was my biggest goal of the year. That's probably the first time you've ever done that, huh? Uh, yeah, I don't know that. Had anybody else instruct you on killing turkey? Yeah. I, I mean, I hunted with Shane last year. Who's, Shane's a good caller, really good caller. But, I mean, we were just co-calling, you know. It wasn't like one was telling the other one what we should do or where we should go or whatever. We set the blind up the night before. Right. You know, so we were already ready to go. That that was a good example for people. Uh, the place you hunted, you, we know it well enough that you can rely, and for whatever reason, that those birds will roost in the same freaking place almost year-round. Like, And if they're moving, it's you, there's two. 
So you know if they're not in that one, okay, they're in that one. And it's only 100 yards apart because they'll be around the, the hit or over the hill, you know? Mm-hmm. That one is you have to do a little bit of research. And that's what's really tough about in the mornings because if they aren't, if you can't get them to gobble or something or locate them or just listen, you got to know where you've seen them and where you've where they're going to. Because we didn't have any gobbling before we set up. No, we set up before. It's the exact same thing this morning. And it was simply, and they roost in different areas. They'll be somewhere in there, but in different places. So it was a matter of, okay, I've seen them do this, this, and this. I'm going to set up here, even though I haven't heard a gobble all morning. Yeah, you got to trust your, I mean, and we're pretty much talking about archery hunting them where we're committing to a blind. And that makes it much more difficult. Yeah. In my opinion, I mean, I know a lot of people out there, we've had the whole discussion about using a blind and decoys is cheating and all this. Well, when you're hunting with a bow, I'm not saying it can't be done because I did it last year where I hunted with decoys, but without a blind with a bow and got it done. But typically you need the blind to and, and wearing all black, I think, was the key to us all being in there where there was three of us in that blind. And that makes it tough, too, is having three people in I don't care what size who's blind you have three people fills up a double bull blind or anyone else's blind. Yeah, it does pretty quick. So, <laughs> but all black in the blind allowed us to get away with a little extra movement and stuff like that. I don't think any of those birds ever, I never felt like anyone, I don't think anybody looked once picked up on us or anything like that. Mm-mm. Most so, nervous any of them got was after the, either they got shot or the hens weirdly came into the decoys and then turned away. Yeah. I don't know what, don't their, know what deal their deal was, was either. So, it was all good. It was, it's good to kill two turkeys on opening day. That speaks volumes for the amount of effort that everyone put in. So, so we got a couple more days to try to get you one. Maybe you'll kill one this afternoon. We'll see. I hate afternoon hunts, but I do too. Go. I got to make myself do it. I do not like them. No, but they can be good if you can figure out. Western where birds, I feel like, are different in the afternoon because it's just like if you can get one, find one. It seems like in the afternoon well, out you, there, you can also like encourage them. I feel That's like, a, yeah. <laughs> well, you can I see can't them. Encourage them that, here. <laughs> the, the key <laughs> in afternoons, a lot of times, is seeing them. Rarely. Uh, that's not necessarily true. If you go to where you're talking about going this afternoon, I had no idea those birds were around. I hit a call and. Actually, what ha- ended up happening was the afternoon that I hunted there, a train went by. And the train whistle caused the turkey to gobble. Oh. And I was like, perfect. I know there's one in here. And so then I start calling, and they didn't answer. And then all of a sudden I look down, and one is strutting in the logging road, comes yeah. walking up to me. And then I miss that one. And then he flies off, runs off. And then next thing I know, two more come up from behind me. And that was the one that gobbled. They gobbled one time as they got close. Yeah. But that was an afternoon. So... I don't remember if Alyssa's there was an afternoon. No, uh, you, I, when you guys, it was a morning. Yeah. That was a really good sit. Mm-hmm. I've never turkey hunted it, so I've just, deer season, Adam everywhere strutting, which makes total sense. Nick and I, last year, they weren't, they weren't freaking there. It yeah. was weird. Really weird. But there was a whole pile of jakes that were somewhat nearby, so I'm wondering if maybe that's all the toms there now. Maybe. I hope, I hope so. so. That means yeah. they're stupid. Hopefully. That's what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we'll keep this short and sweet so we can get back in the turkey woods, and we'll keep updating you guys as we get after some more, whether we're reaping them, whether we're bow hunting them, shotgun hunting them. we got a little bit of everything coming up this season. So is that it? I think so. All right. Warren, you got a wacky fact for everyone today? Let's see if I can come up with one here in no time. No time. I have a, I have a wacky fact. What? Do you know what the reproduction system of turkeys are called? Uh, I actually, I remember we, this. I do. But we, I can't. We, ran, we read this. Or me and Joey were researching all about it a couple years ago. Can you want me to answer it? Sure. The vent. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Vents. Vents? They have vents. Both. The females is on their back. The males is, I forgot. It makes zero sense. That's why I forgot. It's not in their feet, right? Uh-uh. It's right on their belly, I think. I think so. A super colony, super colony, super colony of invasive Argentine ants known as the California Large covers 560 miles of the US West Coast. It's also currently engaged in a turf war with a nearby super colony in Mexico. 
of ants? Yeah. <laughs> they have super colonies? I guess so. How does someone know this? I don't know. Someone followed these ants? I guess. I, I like thinking about a turf war with ants. I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm just imagining all the like little ant bodies just pew. Because they can lift they like do. 450 times their weight or whatever. Right. So if they're in a turf war, they're probably like just flinging each other, you know. Like How does someone know this? How does someone know that they go all? I mean, I don't know, but it's from probably one of those dot com. So those it's biologists be that study <laughs> insects and stuff. So they follow the ants all well, over. Well, they got to study insects sometime, and so I'd imagine they. Oh, what? I thought that was just spiders. I don't know why I thought that. Was. <laughs> oh, we're A's. in we're in tor- turf wars. As humans, why can't ants be in turf wars? I, you can follow us. You can see what's going on. You know, I They're mean, just littler. It just makes it much more difficult to know that boy, know. they're There's headed a big to Mexico boom with us. If somebody shoots the other person, that's a little different than the ant going and stepping on the other ant. I think I feel like they could really mess each other up. I would. I would imagine it's quite the quite oh, the chaos. Because how much how much can they lift beyond their body weight? Oh, it's a lot. It's some ridiculous. I'm out. Let's see how strong are. Oh, another ants. wacky fact is coming when we find out how much there would be people that are going to raise. Ants are some of the strongest animals in the world relative to their size and can lift between 3,400 and 5,000 times their body weight. Holy shit. For example, a two milligram ant carrying 10 times its own weight is about the equivalent of a 180 pound human carrying a full grown cow. Ants are able to carry so much weight because they are mostly muscle, which allows them to carry more weight. <laughs> well, Good that job, makes sense. Google AI. <laughs> ants are also known for their stamina and otherworldly skills. For example, the Saharan Sa- Saharan silver ant can run 100 times its body length in a second, which is 69% the speed of sound. Where is this ant? I don't know. I don't want to run into that yeah, thing. Yeah, but think about it. In a second. That's probably a hundred times its body length. Still, but it's yeah, but, but it must be little. That's fair. You know, he's covering a lot of ground, or she is, or it is. That's pretty impressive. I it's still, fast. I think the thirty four hundred pounds or thirty four hundred times their body weight is. I feel like for a hundred eighty pound human, that should be way more than a full grown cow. I don't They're know. Doing our relative on size, I think. I don't think that that makes that's, that's not right. Two thousand pounds, roughly, I would guess, or more. It's a ratio. Hmm. All right, there you go. He's, or Warren got one green ding today for his wacky fact. So mark that down, Joey. Yeah, he doesn't miss him. Good deal. All right, guys. Well, we appreciate you tuning in, and we will talk at you next week. And hopefully, we have a few more turkeys to talk about. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in. Blah, 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 blah.